what the hockey stick does is basically it's a metaphor for revenue. So you have usually about three years of very low revenue and low growth where your business isn't really doing much of anything. And then you have like a hockey stick where it turns north, kind of the shaft of the hockey stick. Something happens, you know, an epiphany or all kinds of different things happen where the business can now take off and be successful. There are three things you can do, a big company can do when it buys a company. One is keep it as a company which is what we were, a separately run organization with its own profit and loss statements, its own philosophies, and all the big company does is own it. And so everything's pretty much separate. Or they can turn it into a division. Do y'all know what a division is? Have you ever heard of what a division is within a company? Have you ever heard that term? We're a division within IBM. But a division is where there are some shared services. You know, we already have marketing. You have marketing. Why don't we fire your marketing staff? Use our marketing. But you can keep all the other stuff, like producing your product. Or keep your salespeople. So they kind of go through the organization and decide what synergies exist. A good example would be like legal. You don't need your own lawyer. We have tons of lawyers. And what that does is cause this 7.8 million to go down. Questions about that? And then the third option is product. They go, we're going to buy a company and turn it into a product. OK, now that means you really don't have a separate organization at all. You know what you have when you have a product? Product manager. Hi, I'm a product. Have you ever heard that term? You met people who are product managers? That's what they do. They're like, forget it. We don't need a company. We'll just have a product manager. And that's it. And we'll just milk it. We'll take that 7.8 million and run it down to about 500,000. How does that sound? Or maybe a million. And by the way, if you have a good idea and you're working on a computer or you're working on anything and you're on someone else's property, it's theirs. So don't, don't go get a job and use your work computer to design and engineer your next textile clever idea because if you do that that's theirs I want to talk about product development just a little bit because I think it's very relevant there I mean how many of you have ever heard of the lean startup you heard of it? anybody heard of it the lean startup okay the lean startup was a book written by a guy named Eric Reese who was mentored by a Stanford professor Steve Blank Eric Reese, smart dude, it started a business and it failed. Did all this planning up front, everything right. Flopped. Why do I do all this work, raise all this money just to fail? Why don't I just start small? And he started this whole, uh, I guess it's really like a cult following. Millions of people read it and believe it. And it's basically, it's called a lean startup starting with a minimum value product. MVP, you might want to write that down. You start with a prototype. And a prototype doesn't even have to be a finished product like this jacket. It could just be a, the way this jacket looks. And you put it up on the screen or whatever, and you just go to everybody. And you socialize your idea very early on. Some of you might have these ideas like, no, I'm not telling them. I'm not going to lose my idea. We do a lot of planning before I tell you. That's not what the modern way to start is. People aren't going to steal your idea one on one. They got their own kids. You know, people are too busy to steal your idea. So what you do is you socialize the heck out of your idea before you spend a lot of money, and you create as many prototypes as possible, and then you just try to sell them. Do things that don't scale. Does that ring a bell to anybody? Do things that you know what scale means. Raise your hand. What does scale mean? It's kind of a vague word. Did you get it? You know what it is? Like a large size of a company, like big or small? Yeah, a big company is at scale. That's one of the meanings for sure. We're at scale, you see the CEOs. Our company is at the scale it needs to be. What is it? There's another important definition, scalability or scale. What is that? Scale means the, the activities we're doing are profitable. So we're doing these things and making money. You're setting up a lemonade stand, you're probably not making scale. It's the opposite of scale because you 
You're costing ingredients and you're just not making money. You think you are because you're a kid, you don't have any other costs. But scale means I spend 10 cents and I get a dollar back. And I just keep spending 10 cents. Every time I spend 10 cents, I get a dollar back as a machine. And until this mid party's over, I'm just going <coughs> to win that scale. But in the beginning, you do things that don't scale. It's sort of contradictory. It's like the opposite of what you think. That most people who start businesses go, well, first I have to think about, will this, will this make money? It's not going to think about that. Just do it. Worry about that later. So you do things in the beginning that don't scale. Speed of your activities versus speed of your company going explosive growth. I say these people don't mess around and move fast. That's true. Like this guy, he had his idea and he set up shop. And he went to the lawyer, got his IP he needed, and went to work. That's what I mean by speed. Same with Boogie Wise. They had the idea within six months they were in target. And that's the truth. That's amazing to me. I cannot believe they pulled that off. It was because they were all in. That doesn't mean their growth went like that. And same with Under Armour. Their revenue, even with the activities, you feel like a failure, but your speed, your speed is good. So you're not just taking a year to talk to a lawyer. Now i got to write a business plan, which is going to take me. They do all these things at once. I mean, they juggle a thousand things. I've noticed this because I've interviewed so many successful uh, entrepreneurs like Jim Goodnight from SAS. I interviewed him, Bob Young from Red Hat. All these successful entrepreneurs, and they do a lot fast. But their growth curve is not fast. It's actually slow. And that's, that's kind of that comparison there. Oh, like one of our ideas is licensing. So what is like a banking challenge with getting a product licensed or something? Yeah, so licensing is a great way to scale. You know, that word scale meaning you get a lot of profit, a lot of growth without spending a lot of money. Because someone else who already has the infrastructure, you're going to license to them, right? Yeah. You're going to have an idea and you're going to give them a license to sell it, yeah. right? Sell and market it. And so here's, here's the, the upside is it you now have this huge sales force selling for you because right? they like the product. But they're probably going to co-brand it or something like that. That's the upside. The downside is there's a number of things which you should protect in a legal agreement really well. One is you lose brand control because you're trying to create a certain vibe for your business and when you license it, you've lost a lot of that control. You may lose pricing control. So if you're giving it to them, they can Depending on your licensing agreement, they might be able to price it differently. The third thing is they could compete with you. Like maybe the licensing agreement when it expires, they're like, okay, I'm done now. I got all the stuff I need. I've learned enough about this business. I'm going to build versus buy. Build versus buy is the decision companies make all the time. Should I buy it or should I build it? So when you license, you do run that risk. Although the most aggressive business people don't worry about stuff like that. They just move forward. They say, I, I don't care if they compete because I can beat them even if they do. But I would say lawyer up and when you license. Because you're losing a lot of control on your intellectual property. Does that help? Yes, yeah, thank you. I didn't do it. Uh, my profile said people wanted to license them and people, and I just, I'm, I feel good about that. So it's not a slam dunk. I made a good decision. I think.